right, folks, welcome back to yet another episode of A Fresh Juice, an indie game podcast. I am one of your hosts, Tommy Fresh, and joined, as always, it is Matty Juice. What is going on, everybody? Tommy, it's good to be back. Episode 41. It feels like a minute since we've done this. We had the holiday weekend, you know, yeah. we kind of pre-recorded, you know, the episode for last week. So it's been a minute getting back into the swing of things ready to talk about some indie stuff but uh yeah it's uh it's been good how are you doing i'm good i'm good it has been a minute and you know last week yeah we 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 did a double duty on recording two weeks ago so last week we did nothing because i was in maine uh you went to delaware uh and the rest of the folks were in some other states i guess but uh you know and then and then we we had a family party on the fourth that was a lot of fun and then we even hung out on saturday as well because we had to get some um some measurements done for the new studio that, that yeah. we're getting yeah. and, uh, in know, the hamptons in the hamptons you know and we had some pizza it was really good oh yeah the de lorenzo's shout out de lorenzo's mercer county new jersey just some of the best pizza Ooh. tomato pie Oh my god. Sponsor um, us. Yeah, that would be a wild sponsorship. <laughs> that would like, be. You know, we should be reaching out to Tropicana or, or like, you know, just our wait, what's the other one? Pure Simply. Art? Oh, Simply. Simply something. Simply. Yeah. Simply. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, it was a busy, busy couple days, you know, just had a good time though. I ate a lot of lobster in Maine. I had a great time at the Trampled by Turtles concert um yeah but like it's just it's just it's been a whirlwind i don't really get to take full weeks off ever it feels like and that was yeah. like the the only time i've, I've done it in, the, in a long time since at least like 2020 even though it felt like every week was off you just could <laughs> leave your house uh yeah. but you know what about you what's what's been going on yeah just um you know went to delaware like you said that was a good time went with um the cousins so that was fun got some wicked sunburn i'm still still peeling quite a bit from it i actually think i got a second degree burn on my arm because this like was the only part of my sunburn that like severely hurt and like i couldn't even like you know like when i'd be sleeping i would like roll over on it i would just be like ah like it would just be brutal and it's like it's peeling way more than the rest of the sunburn that I have. So I don't know. But we were kind of thinking like, yeah, maybe it's like second degree. It's kind of hard to see. It doesn't look too bad on camera because it's uh, almost fully healed. But yeah. Um, yeah. So that was we're, we're a week, a uh, week removed from it. So I yeah. 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 So but it's itchy as hell. Um, so that was the only downside of Delaware was me getting sunburn. But that happens anytime I go to the beach. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, I mean, it's been once human, you know, uh, for those who didn't see, I became an official once human partner. Once human is this survival MMO game that's coming out. Um, actually, by the time you're listening to this episode, it will be out. Um, it comes out on the 9th of July. So, yeah, I've been working on a lot of videos for them. They've been sponsoring some videos. So I've been just kind of knee deep in content. And it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun so far. It kind of basically starting like a part-time job doing content, which is, you know, something I've always kind of wanted to do. So, um, and you know, who knows if the podcast gets, you know, that's another part-time job. All of a sudden I got a full-time job in content, Tom part podcast, <laughs> part once human, you know, it just makes sense. But yeah, so I've been pretty busy with all that stuff, but um, did carve out some time obviously to play the game for this week. So made sure i got that done but yeah otherwise doing pretty good yeah yeah i mean we're obviously all very happy for you you know with the once human stuff and and maybe you know it becomes like you know something right like you know never know and yeah. i don't know i think people are excited about this game it is free to play which is kind of cool too i know that people just like well that is a huge you know kind of thing that you know attract people these days and like there are oftentimes, you know, we've talked about Kung Fu Kickball a million times, right? This like really fun kind of uh, brawler slash 2D Rocket League kind of game yeah. that was so much fun. But then it came out 
and it was twenty dollars and i understand it was a solo dev and or, or or something like a solo dev close to a solo dev at least uh you know to my understanding but and then you're just like ah oh, man th it's hard to get people to spend twenty dollars on something that is not they can't easily get convinced right yeah if it's free to play and then you can do the cosmetics and the battle pass, maybe, uh, you know, it easy on the battle pass, but yeah. So like, you know, seeing a, a free to play game, get a lot of hype and you being involved is very cool. It's actually inspired me to do more content as well. Cause I'm like, well, you know, you know my, my co-host is cranking out content. I'm like, well, I'm gonna start streaming more flesh and blood. Those have been going really well. I put out a yeah. gameplay video today uh that was just it's super and this is listen, it is what it is. It's super low low effort. I just I'm already playing flesh and blood. Yeah. I'll just turn it on and just start talking. I'm already talking to myself in my head, so now it feels less crazy <laughs> if I'm being recorded. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, listen, just a bunch of content kids. And That's what we are. <laughs> Renaming the pod with the content kids. Yeah, we're gonna start a hype house. <laughs> a hype house, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna in the Hamptons. That's what they're measuring. <laughs> the, the new <laughs> hype house. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Sketch will uh, be there. We're yeah. gonna, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> listen, I wouldn't have a problem with it if Sketch was there, but uh, that's neither here nor there. But we do have a great episode for you all uh, this week. We we're talking about a, a game called Oh Dear, uh, which is by Cozy Cabin Studios, developed and published by them. It's $9.99 on Steam and 50% off until July 11th. So if you're listening to this when it comes out, you have a chance to get this for 5 bucks. And it is an interesting game, uh, but we got to get to some news first. So let's get to some news and talk about well, the biggest news ever. Well, it's the Fresh Juice Discord that is open to everybody. No paywall behind our Discord. Isn't that really cool? You yeah. can hang out there, recommend games, hang out. Um, that's a lot of hanging out. That's twice. Third time's a charm. You can hang out, and then you can also post <laughs> pictures of your food, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So check that out. It's in the show notes below. But Yeah. Been getting yeah. some great game recommendations through the Discord as well. Oh, yeah. we got a shout out. Uh, some of the juice heads out there sending over some really awesome games. We're adding it to our list. Hopefully we'll get to reviewing those at some point, but thank you guys for, you know, kind of sharing that stuff with us. Cause you know, we we're, we're busy as well. You know, we always try to carve out some time to look at what's upcoming, but it's hard to catch everything in the indie space. So we appreciate it. Sometimes even uh, we play games that were recommended to us. And I certainly don't remember it getting recommended. That's, how many yeah. recommendations we get? And I'm looking <laughs> at I'm looking at you, Capolo. Um, <laughs> but I know Matt saw it. I know Matt saw it. But it is the tail end of the stream summer sale, right? I went a little crazy. I bought a lot of games, um, but uh, we do have there. You know, somebody. We appreciate this. P compile a list of some of the best games you get on sale, or maybe some hidden gems. Uh, this was on video games dot si yes even? uh sports illustrated really yeah because they got the si swimsuit link at the top that's, the only reason I <laughs> that's crazy yeah they got a whole video game section <laughs> of sports sports illustrated. Illustrated. video games let's go <laughs> um yeah so this article you know obviously it's not all of the indie games that are on sale there's some of them you know we'll talk about kind of what we picked up as well but uh, just want to shout this out. You know, it'll be in the show description as well in case you're interested. But Phantom Abyss, 50% off from Devolver Digital. Wilder Myth, Wilder Myth, um, that is 30% off. Unpacking, 50% off. Cobalt Core looks pretty cool, 25% off. These are some pretty good discounts here. There is no game, Wrong Dimension, 30% off. Coin Pusher Casino, 25% off. Big one here, Celeste, 90% off on Steam. I don't even know what that ends up being. That ends up being maybe like 5 bucks. $2. $2. $2. $2. There you go. Um, Balatro, 10% off. It's already – that. pick it up if you don't have it. Yeah. Pick it up, 10% off. I think that's the deepest discount it's ever had. I think it's never been more than 10%. 
Uh, and then we have Inscription, 60% off, and the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I've actually played Stanley Parable. It's fun. That's 50% off um, on all on Steam. So, yeah, some good deals here. I've actually heard from a few people that, uh, you know, we were talking about it in the Juice Heads Discord as well. This is like one of the best Steam summer sales that we've had in quite a while, or just Steam sales in general. They used to be great, right? They used to have the flash sales, and basically every day you would log into Steam, it would be different sales that would happen. So you had to like try to capitalize on, um, you know, whatever was like that flash sale. They ended up switching that so that the Steam summer sale, it's just the same sales every day but it's for like 10 days you know it's just to give i guess people more time to buy it but that kind of like ruined a little bit of the, the some of the sales right because you know someone's going to put their game on like 90 percent off for like two hours right that's going to get a lot of sales you put your game 90 percent off for 10 days you're going to get a lot of sales but you probably don't want to have it 90 percent off for that long i guess unless you're celeste when you've been out for a bit um so I just I, I feel like when they switched that formula for the Steam sales, it just became less interesting and like less good deals. But it seems like this one just has strong deals across the board. Um, it's the first time I've picked up a game during the Steam summer sale in probably a year or so, maybe two years. Um, usually I'm buying stuff just full price, I guess. But mm -hmm. I know you were saying that you picked up a lot of games. So I'm curious to know everything you picked up what you picked it up at and um yeah just just let me know i'm curious yeah i went a little hog wild here so i'm just gonna go down my list of things that i picked up it's not like a ton but it was enough that i was like all right i i keep buying stuff and i will say i'm gonna be picking up cobalt core after i hadn't heard of that game and it looks very cool and i want to play it so i'm going to do that right after we're done recording maybe even play some tonight um Ooh you know get crazy a little bit so let me go <laughs> down here man we we have played a lot of games um i picked up noida which might get a shout out later in the game or in the in the podcast this is not a game uh i picked up well technically i did pick up oh dear which yeah. is on sale i picked up scowled against the black priory um this kind of uh the RPG type game uh, and Thronefall. And I'm pretty sure there's another one that's not installed yet and I just can't see it, but Thronefall, which is kind of a, oh God, it's like, a, it's, it's a little weird. It's like, this is like RTS E, but you build up like a castle and stuff like that. But then it's, you're kind of going from level to level. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very cool. You're just, it's, it was almost on my rec room this week uh, because I did really enjoy it. I'm going to play a lot more of it, but um, you know, the other game edged it out a little bit, but it's very cool. You're just, you're riding around the horse. It's an early access right now and you're building up your castle and then you can get dudes, whatever, and then you can move them with your horse and then fight off waves of enemies. And uh, it it seemed like at first I was like, oh, is this like um, you know, like a Clash of Clans hmm. clone? And then it felt a lot more deep and obviously not a um, free to play or pay to win nonsense. But yeah, is um, that uh, early access too? you said that one? It is early access. And I think there is a little bit of a sale on it. Um, I don't let me see. Let me go to the store page here. Um, it is on sale 25 percent off for 750 oh. small price now not as much content yet but they're continuing to um upgrade it not upgrade it <laughs> what, add, add to it update to update it. update it <laughs> there it is um and then upgrade scowled it. i got for oh uh, i didn't get that one <laughs> I did not get that one on sale that's embarrassing <laughs> um <laughs> but you uh got it. But I did. Oh, I got it all right. And then Noida, I I definitely got on sale for yeah. sixty percent off at seven ninety nine. And I'll tell you what, that is a, a banging deal right there, folks. Yeah, that's so, the one I also picked up as well. Uh, Noida, and yeah, it's been fun. I played a bit of it. Got to play some more because that game is pretty in depth. You know, because mm -hmm. you know, 
lot more than I thought it would be. So uh, I got to definitely set aside some time and just dig into it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, really awesome. This is the kind of the first one I've ever really paid attention to. I always like knew it was going on, and then maybe if like I happened to buy something during it, awesome. But like this, since we've been doing this podcast, this is the first like summer uh, sale that I've been like, oh, I should actually look for some deals. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool. But yeah, um, but, yeah. also. Uh, on, uh, hey, oh, 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 whoa, what's going on? We're professionals. Uh, also, just in, just moving to the next bit of news here as well, you know, it was a little slow on the indie news side because we were planning to just talk about the Steam Summer Sale. But for those of you who've been listening to the show, you know that Tommy Fresh and I are big fans of a game called Retro Bowl, which is an awesome mobile game for iOS and Android and on Switch as well, I believe. Um, and it's a, you know, American football kind of retro looking game. Well, the developer for Retro Bowl is coming out with a new game um, called Retro Slam Tennis. So they're entering the tennis arena. Uh, they have a soft launch right now in Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland, and they're going to be doing a full release uh, next week on iOS, and then Android will be coming very soon, they said. So I think you can pre-register your interest in it on the App Store as well. I'm not too sure. I don't have an iPhone. I think you can do that. Um, but, yeah, pretty cool to see. I mean, I put so many hours into Retro Bowl. I, I love that game. Um, you know, went through so many seasons. Not the biggest tennis fan, but I like tennis games, you know. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm also going to like this one. I'm curious to see how it plays. They haven't released gameplay for it yet. Um, and it will be a free download as well. Um, which is oh. awesome. So I don't think Retro Bowl was, right? I think it was I maybe think like the two original one or... was, and okay. then you can pay for like the the full version. Um, and then I think they consolidated it at, at some point. Um, but it. yeah, this is very exciting because I, I'm like you. I love tennis games. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of tennis as well, especially playing it. And, you know, right now I think it's Wimbledon which kind of makes sense for this to come out right now. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's super exciting. I mean, I, I haven't, they've, they've, they've made some other games, right? Not just retro bowl. They did the NCAA one. I know that, um, what else did they do? Did they do a soccer one? Uh, or uh, yes, retro <laughs> goal. They've done retro bowl college. Uh, and then they have, uh, this is new star games. They have like a manager game, new star manager, new star baseball. Uh, okay. but those are, those are kind of not in the same theme as retro bowl, like a retro bowl, retro goal and retro bowl college. And the, uh, slam tennis game are kind of all themed the same, if that makes sense. So that's kind of their collection right there. Um, but yeah, I actually haven't played Retro Goal or Retro Bowl College, um, so maybe I'll have to try those at some point um, and see how fun they are. Yeah, I mean, I have. I mean, I have to imagine the the college ones very similar outside of yeah. the the unique rules to uh, college football uh, that don't apply to you know the NFL style um, American football, as you so eloquently put it. Right, I am. I am so solid. This is football. You guys are playing yeah. soccer yeah. because at that, the name soccer originated in England. I'm so sorry. I understand you use your foot. <laughs> I understand you use your foot, but guess what? Yeah. Typically the first play of I'm not, I'm definitely in American football. The first play of the game is with the foot. It, the ball is kicked. True. Oftentimes the last play of the game, the ball's kicked. True. And then almost always, like 95% of the time, the last points that are scored in a game is a kick. I'm just saying, we're <laughs> using our feet too over here. Um, uh, You know, yeah. don't don't jump down our throat. You, do, you don't even use your feet. We do. A yeah, lot. We Actually, do. Actually, a lot. If, we're not, if yeah. the team's not good, we're kicking it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. if it's really good, we're kicking it a lot. It happens both ways. Yeah, and this ball is harder to kick too. All yeah, right, so it's, we're it's better kickers. Kick. You know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. I actually did see just you know 
I did see a video recently saying, you know, that soccer originated in the UK because of um, because of like teenage boys in the UK. They uh, basically took like the I, I'm going to butcher mm. this, but they took like the word association yeah, and they yeah, were yeah. doing like there was like a trend of putting ER at the end, but they couldn't do asser. So they took the AS off the front of association and made it soccer. Yeah. Um, so there you go. That's that's, the, that's those, your lesson. Those are the facts, yeah. folks. Those are the facts. Are the facts. I mean, they were doing it as like copper, like a, like a cop. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. It yeah. just is what it is. And then they wanted to change it back to football because the Americans were calling it soccer. And God forbid anybody's <laughs> like us. God. We I, we do a lot wrong. I understand, but we do some things right by calling it soccer. Anyway. Um, <laughs> comment below how wrong we are or how right we are. More, please, more of that. Yeah, how right more arguments in the comments, please. <laughs> more arguments, but <laughs> hey, listen, we do got to talk about this game. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, one hunter and up to four more friends disguised as deer in this thrilling game of hide and seek, where every move could be the last. Will you blend in with the herd or stand out? Oh dear. So let's talk about the gameplay of this game. This is um, kind of in the realm, the the world of like things like Among Us or or Lethal Company, where you kind of hop on and you get in, and there is a twist on hide and seek or or even uh, like werewolf in a way, where you might be not what you're seeing like you're not what you've seen not what you've seen <laughs> my god <laughs> Wait, i don't even know what you're saying right now. <laughs> i'm having a stroke you are not what you seem seem okay. with an m sorry it's a little <laughs> long day um so you so you're not what you seem and uh you know you... <laughs> we're <laughs> We're leaving this in, I swear to God. Yeah, well, we should. <laughs> this is good. This is raw. This, <laughs> this is how we do it. This is raw. Um, but anyway, so you hop in, you get into a lobby, and it's five of you. <laughs> <laughs> what? You want me to take this over, Tom? Is that... <laughs> no, no, I got it. I got it. There's five of you, and and then all of a sudden when the game starts, one of you becomes the hunter, and the everybody else is a deer, and they're disguised as the deer, and you have a not health bar, but like a hunger bar. And when the hunger bar stops, you stand up, and yeah. the hunter the knows. Yeah, yeah. So the hunter knows you're not a real deer because there's other fake deer around on the map. Um, so you have to eat these mushrooms to replenish your your uh, your bar. Um, you have simple commands. You just press E to pretend to eat or to actually eat, right? So you can pretend to eat the grass or you can eat the mushrooms. Uh, you can move around with, with WASD um, and then you can press space to uh, poop fart, like, like a little, like kind of like dash. a boost, like yeah. a dash. Yeah. And uh, that's really not that useful. To be honest, I haven't felt it to be useful. And then you can also right click on your mouse and you can scan the area for um, uh, like landmines and stuff like that. So that's the game. <laughs> that is pre pretty much it. Uh, so you're the hunt as the hunter, you have the sanity bar where if you kill a deer that is not uh, a person. You start to lose sanity. You're also your sanity slowly going away as well. And I think it replenishes when you kill um, another player uh, just a little bit. Yeah. But when your sanity runs out, everything goes dark. And basically all the remaining player deer become like a, like a full Wendigo scary thing. And you have to run. The hunter has to run back to the cabin and, these deer things have to grab you before. And that's how the deer win. That's the game, right? It's, it's they're relatively short. And um, I found it a little bit in, you know, in terms of my experience with the game, 
a l- not so intuitive uh, right away. Yeah. It's very simple, but, you know, kind of as the deer, you're kind of walking around and you're like, I didn't even understand. Like, I kept trying to eat with the E and I was like, my hunger is still going down. Like, oh, and then I then I realized I had to go to the mushroom. So once I found that out, it was fine. And then once you <laughs> kind of expose yourself as the deer, like you stand up, it, there's, it does not seem like you can get away from the hunter that well, right? And even with the poop dash, it's it's not that easy. So that's all fine and good. I understand that it's a skill issue in a lot of ways. But my one problem with this gameplay is when you die as the deer, you just got to wait until the whole game plays out if you want to play with these people again. Now, this is the problem that I had as someone that was playing with randos. If I was playing with my friends, like, you know, myself and four other friends, that would be a different situation because that's like among us, right? You kind of be like, all right, well, I'll, I'll watch this play out or whatever. Yeah. It won't be too long. I can I can talk some shit or whatever and, and have a good time. But as someone that was just hopping into different queues, I, I felt like the experience was not that great um, in that regard. What do you think? Yeah. Um, so this game, you know, it's it's not early access, but it feels early access. Um, it, it was in early access for, I think, a few months when I was doing some research about it. But uh, it really is, is kind of rough. It reminded me of Gary's mod. Uh, I used to play that back in the day where you basically just kind of choose a server to join. Hopefully you get in. Um, you know, I know a few times I was trying to get into a specific server and it just wouldn't let me in. I had to like refresh the server list over and over. Plus you're dealing with people with all different pings. So, um, I, there was only one server of mine that was like in the green and I was like, I'll, I guess I'll keep trying to get into this one. So there's not really any like quick play matchmaking or anything like that. And it's very much a game, uh, like you mentioned, like among us, lethal company, you know, where you're going to want to play it with friends uh, to get the most out of it. There's no VoIP. There's no, like, you know, um, uh, voice chat, anything like that, that I noticed in the game, at least. there, Perhaps there is, and I just wasn't able to to, to use it. Um, but, or maybe my, my the party I was in, they just weren't talking. I'm not too sure. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it feels a little rough, and I would like there to be more things on both sides of uh of kind of the on both sides right the hunter and the deer side more things to do i kind of felt like it was very vanilla and this is where it kind of comes into like me just saying it's it seems early access when apparently it's not an early access um and i think this is also a game that was maybe rushed to market because there was kind of this other game, I think it was called Hoophobia, where they were kind of doing the same sort of thing, but I believe it was like a little bit more realistic looking, almost like um, Call of the Hunter. Like those games are kind of more realistic looking, but it, I think it had this sort of asymmetrical gameplay. So I think there was kind of maybe like a rush to market um, just try to get this out. And this is a very like tiktok kind of game where like I can see big streamers playing it maybe having some funny clips, but eventually it gets kind of repetitive, right? Regardless of the maps changing, at the end of the day, you only have limited things you can do as the deer, limited things you can do as the hunter. I would like them to see, like them to add maybe some traps that both sides can maybe set more, maybe like interesting traps that are unique to certain maps, something like that, um, where maybe you can catch the hunter. Like I'm kind of thinking of like Dead by Daylight, right? Like, I know that game has its issues, but there's definitely a lot of different uh, play styles that you can sort of have with that game. It kind of felt like when I'm the deer, once you're the deer, like once or twice, you're like, okay, like I know what I need to do on every single map. I just need to just look like a deer and hope that they don't spot me. There was also times where I was definitely looking like a deer and they freaking got me. They just like, this guy just walked up and just like shot the arrow right at me. And I was like, how did you even know? It was like right at the beginning. Um, so maybe there's something there I'm not understanding, but it just, yeah, it felt a little repetitive for me. Um, 
the fart dash thing is funny, but then when you start hearing it, you know, so many times every single game, you're just like, all right, Jesus, like this is just, you know, this is just silly, and it it does get old kind of kind of quickly. So, um, yeah, I don't know. For me, like, sure, the first like two games I played, I won as the hunter in the first game. I was the hunter, which was cool. Um, but really, all I did was just kept walking around until I saw a deer stand up, and then I just shot it. Um, and then I actually had a guy. I think the, a good strategy to not uh, have the hunter shoot you is just run at the hunter. He just kept running like around me, and I so I kept trying to turn and get him, and I finally did. Um, but honestly, like after the first like two games that I played, I just kind of was like, all right, this is. I understand the gameplay loop entirely. I don't think there's a lot of variation here. And uh, I really think that this game should be, uh, I know this is an early access uh, trailer that we're watching here on YouTube. So it did, it did enter early access in March. I'm not sure what this would even would have even looked like in early access in March, if this is kind of what the full release is now, granted, I believe it is two developers that are making this. So, you know, I know it's a lot of work to put this together, um, but I just kind of was looking for like a little bit more. I was kind of thinking that this was maybe a little bit more fleshed out, like Lethal Company and Among Us, like sure, they they do feel sometimes like early access-y, um, but I feel like there's enough features and enough like content in those games where you can get a little bit more variety um, every time you play. And this game just didn't really have that for me. Um, so uh, yeah, just the gameplay kind of got stale pretty quickly for me. Yeah, it's, and the, the thing with like Among Us and stuff like that, right? Like Among Us, sure. The gameplay loop, if you just look at it in a vacuum, it's it's very repetitive. But where the differences are is when you have people, different ways that they're trying to lie and different ways that they're yeah. trying to figure out if you're lying. And and that is the, the fun part of that game, right? And with this, it's like, all right, well, I can... <laughs> I can only try to look like a deer so much, right? <laughs> yeah. And I understand there's probably a little bit more, like, not skill, but, like, more, uh, I guess, deduction as the hunter. You're like, I don't like the way that deer's moving. But I don't know. What's the name of the game that you can you can be, like, a piece of the map? Oh, uh, Prop Hunt? That's the Prop game. Mode. Yeah, it's like the game mode from. It's in Call of Duty. I think that's a popular oh, is it? one, and it, it's in Gary's mod as well. Uh, that's kind of okay. I think the original. Uh, it that was mod, yeah. That seems like so much more involved and almost kind of what's going on here, but without the involvement. So, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say that's a good point. Like, I would love to turn into other animals. Give me a squirrel, you know. Mm -hmm. Give me a bird or something, or. Or let me be a bush, you know. I don't know something like that. I know it's called Oh Deer, but I think yeah, yeah that, even something like that could add a lot of variety to every time you play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like you know, the gameplay is clean, but it is so one dimensional. Now, in terms of uh, one dimensional, rather zero dimensions, it's a story. It's a little multiplayer game. It's like Among Us. There's no story there either, right? It's like all right, we're all in space or whatever. Um, uh, this is, uh, the same thing. There's no story here to be even talked about, but unless you, did you find something? Matt? Yeah, actually, uh, if you, um, if you kill all the deer as the hunter, there's like a 30 minute cutscene um, that goes, no, there's nothing, there's nothing story based, uh, in the game. I wasn't looking for anything story based with, with this sort of game either way. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for story. Oh dear is not it. It certainly isn't. Now, the art style, I will say, is charming. Kind of this this blocky, cartoonish, almost like Robloxy kind of a map in a way. Not not fully Robloxy, but like Yeah, like polygonal. It, it, yeah, yeah, definitely. And it it's it's cute, right? It's totally serviceable. I'm not looking at this. I'm like, oh, this, I mean. I don't think anybody's going to be out here saying, oh, dear, looks like like crap. It looks totally fine. This is like, this is a totally serviceable looking game with serviceable gameplay for two games, <laughs> two yeah. rounds of the game. And that's it. I mean, 
I, I didn't really notice anything that was groundbreaking. You know, uh, there's one map, right? It would be nice to have other maps. It does get a little crazy when it gets dark uh, and spooky, which I, I think is cool. But also, like, when you're the uh, the spectator, if you've died, it's not that interesting to look at, right? It's more interesting to be the hunter or one of the remaining deer. Um, so I would, if, yeah. if I were to look at it and fix something, I would make it at least, you know, if you're going to make people wait around, you might as well have them look at something nice or, or have at least a mode where you can look at the whole map. I know you can zoom out, but it doesn't really give you any kind of bearing on what's going on in the game. So like, yeah, that's the nice thing about, um, like among us, you can kind of just go check out whatever and um just don't get that in in this so yeah no i definitely agree like i i liked the overall kind of simplistic art style with the game um but i would like to see like more variations of deer you know that could be something that maybe the the um you know player can choose and that could also help them maybe hide Uh, i'm pretty sure every deer in the game is like the same kind of skin um, so I know you're trying to blend in, but you know, you could have some deer with some stripes on it or, you know, like, uh, some different antler patterns, things like that. Um, and I also, I, I think the, what really makes me think that this is early access, even though it's not is the menu system. Like when you first joined, I was just kind of like, oh, wow, this is like very, very bare bones. You know, there's a, there's kind of a tutorial you can read through. You know, I guess I should have mentioned this in the gameplay side. I would have liked like a tutorial, just a brief one of maybe you're just like there's a hunter tutorial and a deer tutorial. You go into the hunter one. uh, Maybe there's two deer that are just sitting in front of you. And it's just like uh, figure out which one is uh, a real player. Figure out which one is fake, you know, whatever that is. Um, And then, yeah, for deer, it could just kind of teach you how to how to like blend in maybe something like that. But regardless, talking about the art. you know, I, I do think that the, uh, you know, the menu system could look a little bit cleaner. Um, it just was kind of giving me a lot of like the like Gary's modish sort of vibes uh, again. Um, but yeah, I mean, the art for the the game looks pretty cool. I actually, I almost prefer this over like that other game I mentioned of like uh, I think Hoophobia is the name of it, where it looks more realistic. Um, like it's cool that it's more realistic, but this one just is fits like the silly vibe better. Um, so yeah, I, I think you know, the art was fine in the game, but uh, definitely would like a little bit more variation. I know there's a few different maps too, which is cool. Um, would like them to add maybe more of those, um, and maybe even like some more stuff for the hunter, right? Like maybe you know you're a hunter with different weapons you know maybe you have a spear maybe you have uh you know maybe a gun i don't know if that's too easy but uh, (laughs) maybe like a musket i don't know something that's like not super easy to uh to reload or something like that but um yeah i think overall you know the art for the game was fine but i would like it to be a little bit more polished i would say yeah Yeah. it's it's just something that it's totally serviceable and like i think would have been would have been a little i mean it's charming right i think i think it would have been a lot more charming if if everything around it kind of brought it up right yeah you know i think that it's it's just like oh this is this is fine this makes sense yeah. um but um yeah and in terms of the sound it's in the same category right the aesthetics of 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 a game often kind of like tie into the the same realm uh in these situations uh, the farts are funny, right? You know, a fart is funny. I'm, I'm, I'll be the first to say it. A fart is very funny, <laughs> but I do think that it gets old very quick, as you said. And there's not a lot of variation in music. There is, uh, you know, some like basic sound effects here. Nothing, nothing crazy. The farts are the only like thing that you really remember after playing it. And yeah. Um, it's it's just a just okay right it's it's it, you don't expect a lot from a game like this but somehow it still falls short in a, in a way yeah which is it's a shame because there was there were moments in this game where i was, where I was having fun and enjoying everything that was going on but 
it just wasn't really supported by everything else going on uh, it wasn't like a an ensemble kind of thing yeah yeah agreed um yeah exactly you know uh ditto i don't even know what else to say to that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's exactly how i'm feeling about it um nothing to write home about farts are funny and that's about it they sure are hey listen yeah. i mean farts will always be funny to me i hate to be the the bearer of bad news there but it's is just, that bad news i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh now in terms of how it performed uh i did get kicked out of some some cues of randomly but it didn't i mean that might have just been other players problems but it did it just kind of there's not a lot of of lobbies it, it felt like so uh that's yeah. just something that i ran into but in terms of how the game performed itself it didn't feel um brutal it's not a really heavy game even though when i started playing it they were like your your graphics driver is out of date um hmm which I updated and then it was, didn't say that anymore. So maybe that's on me, but <laughs> you know, uh, but even before I updated it and I still played, I had no issues. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I also, uh, no issues. You know, I did get booted out as well, but it could have been for a multitude of reasons, um, from a few lobbies. Uh, so yeah, no, no real performance issues whatsoever for me. Um, very lightweight game. Yeah. And I think uh, it ran fine. You know, maybe the best part of the game was the performance. Yeah, I think <laughs> there you go. But I mean, <laughs> well, let's talk about our ratings here. We have a rating system here that is um, entirely original and uh, <laughs> never changing. Uh, S tier. These games are amazing. These are your Bowtros of the world. These are your um, what's the one we just played recently? Haunties of the world. Uh, certified yeah. f- fresh juice at the S tier, A tier, a steel. These are things um, that are good and and are definitely worth worth the time, but not really in the upper echelons of, of the gaming indie gaming history. Uh, you know, going down in history, but always have potential with updates. Get on sale. These are games that are like, okay, um, this is good. Um, maybe don't rush out to get it maybe if it's on summer sale you know maybe yeah. maybe grab it then um that is kind of uh, those games right there manager special which is funny enough i made shrimp tonight that i bought at uh the grocery store i just asked for it and then i realized that they were um picking the shrimp for me and it was on manager special uh which i don't know if you uh, for those of you who don't eat seafood i don't know if you really want the manager special <laughs> seafood but uh i Is ate it, it anyway it, uh, yeah it, was, it smelled bad raw but okay but after i cooked it and ate it it was okay, okay. um it wasn't the best trip i ever had all right manager special these these are things that are maybe really genre specific or you know gosh get it on a deep discount maybe like even free to play it's kind of worth trying it to see if you like it um those are those kind of games and then finally your d tiers spoiled milk um something that we don't recommend to anybody once it expired so yeah we want fresh stuff so what's your do you want me to give my rating or, or you uh well, you you can go if you want okay well so <laughs> interesting enough so initially i was gonna say get on sale like when i first started playing i was like okay i got this on sale and i'm getting about an on sale experience right now Mm -hmm. and then it dried up really quickly right and then then my next thought is is like is this a spoiled milk and i don't think i can give it a spoiled milk because i think there is some fun to be had here however at ten dollars full price i do not think this is this is it so like you know at the five dollars eh, whatever but like at like a deep discount like a 90 percent, like what celeste is which is a certified fresh juice in my mind um i would look at this a lot more as like a manager special this is something that like okay it's on sale for like a dollar or two dollars you get you and four of the friends and you have a good time one night or or like a couple nights <laughs> you know like it, yeah. it's, it's probably a lot more fun with friends right and that's just that's just how this these games are so yeah it's a manager special for me 
All right. Well, I am going to be giving this. This is a historic moment here, Tom. I'm giving this a spoiled milk. All right. And whoa, whoa this is my first spoiled milk for the show. I'm looking at the whole list here. I know it's it's amazing. No, but I, I just think uh, I agree about the price. I think ten dollars is too much for what this game is. Um, I've actually already refunded it on steam even though i bought it for five dollars oh. i'm just like i'm i the reason i did though is it's not because i'm like oh i need that five dollars back i'm just like i'm never gonna play this again yeah um so i'm i'm just gonna refund it and um that's kind of where i'm standing but i also just think you know we've mentioned um lethal company we've mentioned there's also content warning is another game that's kind of le like lethal company um, and then Among Us, there's just so many better games that are like this, that are silly, that give you a better overall experience that I just can't recommend this game. Like if someone was like, oh, should I pick up Oh Dear? My first thing that the first thing I would say was, oh, well, do you own like Among Us or Lethal Company or like even like Content Warning, which I haven't played Content Warning, but it looks pretty fun. Um, so I, I, I just... Don't feel like I could recommend this, unfortunately. I had higher hopes for it going into it. I was also around the on-sale kind of thinking when I first loaded in. But after I played a few games and I realized that it was kind of shallow, um, yeah, I just can't, like, I can't recommend this in in a good faith. In good faith, Tom. I can't do it to the people. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. so, uh, but no, yeah, it's it's a spoiled milk from me. What a historic moment for this podcast. Maddie Juice's first spoiled milk. There it is. It's a shame. It's a shame to see it. You know, oh dear, you know, you really pushed Maddie over the edge, but what are you going to do? Oh dear. Oh dear and dear. <laughs> oh dear indeed. In, oh deed and dear. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we are having fun here, folks. Uh, we don't know what we're playing next week because we're still waiting on an email but it could be this game called exophobia uh it could not be it could be something else maybe the next devolver game anger foot anger foot yeah Ooh, could be yeah could be we love feet on this podcast but we do have listener questions that do come from the fresh juice discord a great place to hang out and submit questions first question comes from longtime listener longtime questioner capolo What's your favorite game to play passively while watching a TV show or a movie? So uh, I, I know what you're going to answer, I think. But I, uh, for me, it was Retro Bowl, to be honest. I've played a lot of Retro Bowl watching stuff. I'll do a drive, and then I'll be like, I'll put the phone down, and I'll watch a little bit of the show, pick it up, you know. Um, so I'd probably say that. It's not a super passive game. So if you're looking for something maybe that's more – like i don't know even like squad busters is kind of like kind of passive right you don't need to pay like full attention to it when you're when you're playing um so yeah i would probably say like those two but definitely retro bowl is like probably my favorite one that i've played while watching like tv or a movie yeah um what did you think i was gonna say Valtro? yeah i was thinking yeah. you were gonna say that just because when we met up on saturday you had it in your car like oh yeah, yeah. well i was bringing, i was just, i was going to the gym after we met up on oh, saturday sure, yeah not, you got it uh, docked in the car playing the at the car, red lights all right <laughs> um uh to be honest i'm gonna say not Valtro, even though i've been known to play it while watching tv or whatever but i'm a little bit too locked in okay yeah, playing Valtro to really pay attention so it's usually like if, if if lady fresh is watching something i'll i'll bust out the Valtro. but slay the spire is a game actually that i'll i'll mess around with um on my phone while watching stuff i actually just re-download the game i was just like i need a little slay the spire fix the game's so good might as well give yeah. it uh give it some time so uh thank you for the question capolo and also i know capolo is asking you know I think last week when we're going to review um what do you call it uh dungeon clawler yes yes i was watching a, a stream of that the other or like a a video of it the other day it does look like a lot of fun and something that i'm going to enjoy capolo uh so yeah, yeah. we'll we'll review it when it we'll comes get out it. We'll get it. <laughs> uh kmore asks have you considered making a review account on steam some people follow those accounts it could be a way to get the word out about the pod 
I have considered this, and I don't know how we should go about doing it. Maybe we'll discuss it after. But have you have you considered this, Matt? Uh, honestly, um, I kind of forgot about it until you asked this question, came more in the Discord because uh, I have seen. You know, obviously, when we play games every week. I'm looking at the reviews usually for the games just to kind of get an idea of like what people are complaining about to see like if I'm also feeling the same way. And I do see some reviewers on there that are like, okay, this is not just a single person. This is like an entity, you know, this is like a business or a channel or something. Um, so when I see that, I'm like, oh yeah, like maybe we should do this for fresh juice. But then I usually just like forget about it. But um, yeah, it's an interesting idea. You know, I don't know. I honestly don't know if, like how exactly that works because we wouldn't have any play time on that account. Mm -hmm. And it usually shows that when you leave a review. So I don't know if steam would eventually be like, all right, these guys are reviewing a bunch of games or this account's reviewing a bunch of games. They got zero hours on all these games. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that would be something unless there's some sort of like way we could like have a joint account. That's, I don't know. I, I don't really know how it works, but it's a good idea. I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, Whatever. I mean, I wouldn't even mind. I'm not tied to my like, account right now. So, like, it's something that I could look at. Um, even, I don't know. We'll figure it out. This, this is yeah. off the podcast. This is this is inside baseball for you all. Yeah. Um, next question. A pretty interesting one, actually, from R Carp, who asks Has there ever been a game that you replayed that did not live up to your memory? Ooh, this is a good one. Um, I'm I'm gonna. I don't know if you want to answer, Tom. I gotta think about this a bit. Um, um it, it, it's so funny because a lot of the games that I have loved over my years, I'm like, I can't wait to. I want to play that game again. I typically have a pretty good experience with them. I'm trying to think. It's so funny. Like I'm trying to think of what I've replayed lately. Um. I replayed Super Mario Sunshine. That's still slapped, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like that's that is um, a, a good one. Um, there's got to be some one of them that I I played. Someone did a remaster of it on PC, and it was a little bit better. Um, this was maybe like two years ago, but uh, GoldenEye 007 mm -hmm. or even Nightfire. Like I just feel like those games because like fps's weren't like really polished back then like they're hard to play yeah. you know so oh, like yeah. you go back and play them and you're like oh my god like i used to play this yeah. you know so it's not like i still have a good time playing it just for the nostalgia but like if uh definitely if i went back to that game and, and i or if i went to play that game and i never played it before i'd be like i'd drop it in like a second probably uh, so that's like the only one maybe i could think of that i just you can tell it's pretty dated and like, I can't play it maybe for too long, but I still have a good time when I play it. Uh, this one's going to be controversial. I'm going to say super smash Bros. melee. Wow. Which yes, we're done with the show folks. That's it's, it. Wrap it's iconic. It <laughs> and maybe this is just a personal experience because of who I play with. <laughs> Not yeah. so much. Um, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> game itself. I played, I played a lot of that game. I unlocked everything, you know, I had it on GameCube. I would play it single player. I had so much fun with that game. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot more when I was a kid, I will be honest with you. And I think the competitive side kind of ruined it for me. Yeah. I will also say the original Super Smash as well. It's a little too clunky for me to kind of enjoy at this point where I've I've got to play things like Melee and super smash bros ultimate and stuff like that um but yeah i don't i don't know like melee yeah. first of all the my problem with melee and i think it's what a lot of people love about melee is that you can cheese stuff and like there's like there there's like these broken mechanics in the game that you can take advantage of right to you know have a competitive edge and people like that and i think that's so dumb uh, I want to play the game as they intended you to play it. And I, it, it makes me sad that I yeah. will play against people that are doing that. I'm just like, ugh, like why, why can't you just be a good captain Falcon or why yeah. can't you just be a good Fox? 
and not a fox that is, you know, sh- uh, wave dashing me, you know, yeah. like or whatever the heck it's yeah. called. Why can't I, you just sit on the edge of the map as a villager cutting trees down? Listen, you know? that's the <laughs> that's kind. Valid, that, that's, the kinda, that's the kind of that's the kind of thing I like to do yeah. <laughs> in that it's game. Valid. But like, it's a. It's, I mean, that's what the character does. But like, it's not like I'm spamming trees. I mean, I'm spamming them in a way, but you can't spam them. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just sorry, folks. Yeah, I, if you want, <laughs> I get that. You know, like honestly, like Smash for me was always like a fun game to play with people. I was never good at it. Like I'm not good at all at Smash. Mm-hmm. So if you know, it, it can get frustrating after like the, you know, we've we've been at parties and stuff, right? Where it's like the sixth or seventh game of Smash is going, and I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna watch, guys. Like you guys. Yeah. You just do your thing. Let me know when you switch to Mario Kart, because uh, that's when I'll be fully in. But yeah, I totally, totally get that with Smash. You know, it's just, uh, um, it's a sweaty game. You know, it's the sweat. super sweaty. Yeah. Oh, and here, I, I'm gonna get even crazier. I hate the GameCube controllers anymore. Okay. Which I understand. This is what you know. A lot of people was like, "This is why would you." Why would you never not use the GameCube controller? I was like, well, because I evolved <laughs> along with the controller, and I use new controllers throughout my life, and I have to learn how to use them. Yeah, I don't need to just use one controller. Um, I, yeah. I, I understand ergonomically the GameCube controller is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll concede that. But I'm I'm sick of people saying, you know what? You got, that's the only good one ever to exist. But the Pro controller is good. Yeah. I even like the Joy Cons. Leave me alone. Also, I feel like people were like, you know, well, firstly, I don't like the triggers on GameCube controllers. I never have. They're too, they're, it's too much like, you know, yeah, just like, clunky. what am I? Yeah, they're, they're clunky. And like, I sometimes I feel maybe I didn't hit it enough or whatever it is. But I also feel like there is a, we're getting into this, there's a, people got their blinders on because before the GameCube controller, there was the worst controller that ever existed. All right. And so people got GameCube and they were like, oh my God, this is what a controller feels like. <laughs> and I just feel like just play with the Switch Pro controller. That is an amazing controller. I mean, what yeah. are we doing here? You know? Anyway, uh, nothing against people like the GameCube controllers, but I just feel like there's, you know, people got the uh the red tinted, the rose tinted glasses on a little bit with them. I think so. I mean, yeah. you know, I've 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 gone down I played Brawl with the Wii Moat and the Nunchuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, yeah. you know, I'm, That's I'm not just, good. <laughs> I was fine. I, I liked the Nunchuck. Like, I, I didn't like the movement part, but yeah. I kind of liked how it was like, all right, I'm doing it. And I, yeah. I, I like the Joy Cons as well, uh, yeah. as, as, even though they have some problems. But the Skyward Sword, you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> we mode with the sword getting the power dude i did have my like college uh dorm i were going on a tangent here and like my roommates just kept going what are you doing and i'm just like oh, i gotta power up like the sword or whatever so every time i would do it they would just make fun of me i was just like i don't there's no other way to do it i guess i don't know uh, yeah so that was that was a weird that's also that was after gamecube right so it's like people yeah. people were like bad controller good controller bad controller so then they're like oh my god i miss the gamecube we're figuring this out no one's talking yeah. about this all right this yeah, is yeah. why people say that controller is so good because it was surrounded by shit that's basically why i mean you want me to say it you guys just like the game controller's got a big old green a yeah. and you don't know what the buttons do you just need a big old green a and i'm sorry you know, us adults <laughs> can figure out what the <laughs> buttons do without them being big and green. <laughs> that's oh just my God. A, that's that's a joke, kind of. Uh, but uh, that's gonna do it for the listener questions. Thank you for the question, R Carp. You're just so lovely. Um, and it sent us down a nice old rabbit hole. Um, this brings us to the rec room where we recommend something that might not be an in indie game. Uh, and then we'll say our goodbyes. Yeah, yeah. On my oh, what you- uh, <laughs> on my side of things, I am recommending. This is a song. 
Um, you guys have probably heard it. It's called Lithonia by Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino, Donald Glover. He's back. Um, and I just can't get this song out of my head. They were like, he was teasing it on TikTok for a while. Um, and then the, the full song came out. I think it's it's pretty good. It's like a you know less than a three minute song, so it's not not too long. Um, and apparently it's maybe like I know he's supposed to be coming out with an album later this year, and like this is also tying into a movie he's doing. Um, but I, I just think it's a catchy song. It doesn't have too many lyrics to it, but it's just kind of got a nice rhythm to it. So I've been listening to it while I've been working. And yeah, it's called Lithonia. I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't already. Is this the one that kind of sounds like a pop punk song? Yeah, it's like uh, it kind of in the middle of it. It kind of starts to, to sound like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. He's finding out that nobody <laughs> gives a fuck. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the song. That was the what was teased or whatever on all of our TikTok. So I just kept hearing it. And then when the song came out, I was like, I might as well listen to the whole thing. Might as and well. Here we are. Yeah. 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 Shout out to Chalice Gambino. Uh, small up and coming artist, and <laughs> no, it, the, the song is good. I gave it one listen so far because uh, our or my my fiance sent it to me and it was like, oh, I like this, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Uh, I haven't listened to it since, but I did listen to it. Yeah. Now I am recommending Noida, which we talked about, which is this interesting survival kind of like looter kind of game in a way you know it's like you, you start out in the beginning you're this like wizard thing you have like two wands and one potion and you go through this procedurally generated world and you collect other potions other wands you fight off enemies you can interact with anything in the game and it's very deep and i started playing and i was like holy smokes this is a lot yeah, and I had to stop and like watch like a video. I'm like, I need at least a little bit of a a guide. I'm yeah. not, I'm not gonna figure all this out on my own. But once I watched a little bit of a guide, I was like, oh, this game is so much fun, and I've been, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. And I, I don't know why I, I drug my feet on it for so long, to be honest. But yeah, Noida, it yeah. is, it is quite good. It is. It's a good one. Recommended as well. Yeah. Amen. Man. That's going to do for the show. It's been a wacky one. I mean, we, the game was wacky. We were all a little bit loopy over here, get a little crazy. Sometimes <laughs> that's just how it goes, man. Yeah. Um, but you can all find me on Twitter at Fresh Buds Pod. I have another podcast called Fresh and Buds, where I talk about a game called Flesh and Blood, which is a trading card game. It's awesome. I love it. You should check it out if you like that kind of stuff. Uh, this week, I will have the man named Dagan White who was banned from a now dead trading card game called MetaZoo that was once pushed by Steve Aoki uh, and <laughs> it, it was like a, a weird um, uh, NFT half NFT half real mm. thing that looked like crap and the owner was a psychopath but Dagan is an awesome card game player and got banned for being too good. I'll say it. Um, and then uh, I think we're going to be getting Uber, Uber shouts, Mitch Leslie winner of the 2023 esports award for best play by play broadcaster in <laughs> esports. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, excited to talk to Mitch. He seems like a really awesome dude, but um other than that, you can find us on all socials at Fresh Juice Pod. And where can people find you, Matt? Yeah, find me at, at Matty Gorm, G O R M, on all the socials. Been doing a lot of stuff on YouTube. Be doing some stuff on Twitch this week. Should be a good time. And uh, yeah, catch me there if you'd like to. Catch him there. <laughs> <laughs> Once human. Next week, a game that we don't know yet. Stay fresh, you juice heads. Ooh.